Hi, and welcome to the section of the Differential Equations Tutor, and in this section we're going to cover the topic of what we call exact differential equations. And it's got a weird name, and it's got a pretty lengthy process that I'm going to have to describe a solution method for you, but basically it just boils down to there's a certain, certain form of a differential equation, just like all of these methods. They all boil down to identifying different forms that the equation sort of uh, fits into. And once you identify it as being the form of an exact or potentially an exact differential equation, uh, then there's a solution technique that you follow, and then it, you know, it's pretty involved, but it's pretty bulletproof. You do the steps in a certain order, and then out pops the solution. So that's sort of the path that we're going to have from here on out through the remainder of the course, is there's going to be a, a form, uh, some mold, so to speak, of a certain class of equations, and if you can identify it fitting into that uh, form or mold, then you go and try to apply this technique to it and see if you can get it to work out. Two things with that, I mean, when you're doing your test, the hardest thing is to figure out if it's of the right form or not. Because, you know, here in this section, all of these equations I'm going to show you are exact differential equations, so you know to use this method. But on your test, you might have ten equations, and you don't even know what form they are, you have to figure that out for yourself. So that's, you know, that is a skill you have to work on. Second thing is, a lot of times when you're doing these things, uh, it's just a fact of life. The calculus gets in the way. You might need to integrate this thing to get, you know, to continue on in the, in the solution method, but the integration can really become an obstacle sometimes depending on how complicated it is. So you do need to be good at your calculus and your techniques of integration especially. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to work through some examples. So let me go ahead and outline the sort of the form of what an exact differential equation is and the general solution method without a specific problem because in your book you'll probably outline a solution method. They're hard to read sometimes without a real concrete example so what I'm going to do is put it on the board um, in Greek so to speak without a concrete example and then as we go through our examples I think you'll get a real good feel for how to do it and what it's really saying. Sometimes when you look at these generic techniques uh, written down in a book somewhere um, they kind of, you know, your eyes can cross sometimes because you're looking at all these things, you're not really sure what they mean. But when you look at a real example, then it becomes a lot more concrete. So that's my plan. One final thing, don't get wrapped up around the title exact differential equation. It, it has nothing to do with this equation being exact, like in, in the sense that we, we use the word exact, meaning, you know, with precision or precise or, you know, with a you know, million decimal places means something is exact, right? This has nothing to do with it. The word exact in this case is just a title. So don't, don't think that this kind of equation is any more exact than any other kind of equation, because it's not. Um, that's just wanted to bring that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, exact differential equations. Okay, and I'm going to warn you, it's going to be lengthy, but it is bulletproof once you, once you know what to do. All right, so just like everything else, you have to start with uh, knowing what the form is. So uh, suppose you have an ordinary differential equation, ODE, of the form and I'm going to write the form in red. So, uh, bear with me, I'll explain in a second. m is a function of x and t times dt plus n is a function of x and t uh, dx and that's equal to zero. This is the form that your differential equation must be in in order to even try to apply this type of solution method. In other words, whether or not you can get the answer is going to depend on a lot of things, but you can't even start unless the actual equation um, fits this form. Don't get too wrapped up in M and N. These are just letters. What they're basically telling you is you have DT, and in front of that DT you have a function of X and T. It could be anything, sine of X times E to the T times natural log of X, whatever, but some function of X and T here. Think of parentheses here with a giant function inside. And then over here you have a different function of x and t. So t's can be in here and x's can be, can be in here also. But you must be able to manipulate the equation into this form so that you have zero on the other side. Um, so if you had something over here like, you know, sine squared t plus 3x or something over here, then it wouldn't be exact because it wouldn't even fit into this mold. So 
you, your equation might be given to you written differently. You know, you might have dx dt times something plus x times something is equal to zero, but you must be able to rearrange it, um, splitting up the dx and the dt, so that in front of the dt you have some function, and in front of the dx you have some function, and on the other side of the equal sign you have zero. So even if you start from an equation that looks different than this, you must be able to break it up and split it up so that it looks like this. Because when you have dx over dt, you can sort of treat that as a fraction, move the dt over here and such like we were doing from separation of variables. So you need to be, basically be able to beat it into this form. All right. So the reason we use m and n is because, in a minute, I'm going to reference m and n, m being the thing in front of dt, n being the thing in front of uh, the uh, dx like that. All right, so suppose you have a differential equation of that form. This ordinary differential